Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Citizen Ecozilla and the Seiko Solar Paddy Tuna. I guess you could consider these you know, kind of similar watches. They're uh, somewhat similar looking. And actually, I should mention that this one has been modified. Not really modified, but I removed the a plastic shroud and replaced it with this metal shroud. Actually, that's not true. I purchased it like this. I purchased it with this shroud on here. And I have the plastic one somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. But anyway, the point of the video is to compare these two watches as they are both dive watches and they're both powered by a solar quartz movement. Um, the Ecozilla is... is uh, it's a fun watch, or maybe a funny watch. I don't know. It always puts a smile on my face when I wear it, just because it's so... Well, it's so ridiculous, actually. But anyway, um, this is the SNE-499, the watch in my right hand. And then the Citizen Ecozilla is the BJ-8050. I believe it's 8050-8E. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description to both of these watches. Let's talk about the dimensions. Uh, it's a little awkward to hold on to the, well, this has a silicone strap, so it bends a little easier. This is a urethane strap, so it's a little more rigid. But anyway, the dimensions, the solar tuna, we're looking at 45.4 millimeter lug to lug. So that'd be this dimension here. And then the diameter is actually larger than the lug to lug. So both of these watches are unusual in their measurements. So lug, I'm sorry, diameter is 46.8. And that is the entire, that's an actual diameter because it's a circle, not a, um, you know, a watch shaped like this where you have the diameter and the lug to lug is a different dimension. So we're looking at 12 millimeter thick on this, which is nice and thin considering it's a, well, it's not super thin, but it is fairly thin considering that it's a 200 meter, 200 meter dive watch, 200 meter water resistant. And the lug width on this is 22. And again, it's on the silicone strap, which these straps are okay. Um, not my favorite, but definitely not the worst strap you could have on a dive watch. They just like to gather all kinds of lint and whatever else is on this watch. I don't know. On this strap, I should say. And they feel comfortable enough. Oh yeah, the crown size on this. This is a 7mm crown and it is a unsigned crown. And there's the case back. If you look at that, Air Divers 200 meter. A little bit of other information. It's a special edition because it's the patty, but it is not limited. Okay, let's look at the Ecozilla. Such a weird watch. Looking at 48.4 millimeter diameter. And it doesn't have lugs, so I can't really give you a lug to lug measurement. I probably could have measured part of this urethane strap somewhere but it bends so whatever 48.4 it's a gigantic watch the thickness on this is a ridiculous 18.4 millimeter thick but you know, that's part of the charm of this watch and as i mentioned it doesn't have lugs so i can't give you a lug width uh, there are some strap adapters that you can buy for this and you can put some other straps on it but uh, i have not purchased those and the crown size is 6.3. It looks really small compared to the watch, but 6.3, I mean, it's a little bit small, but it's not as small as what it looks. And that is an unsigned crown as well. And actually this is a, uh, what is that? Nine o'clock crown, which always throws me off. I try to put it on this way and uh, that's not gonna work. Uh, weight on this guy. Oh, I should mention the weight on this is 110 grams. Weight on this, 177 grams and 
and that's all in this case uh, case head here because this strap doesn't weigh that much. So your thing's strap. So this is 300 meter water resistance, and I definitely believe that considering how thick this is. And this is, as I mentioned, 200. And you can see the dial looks really small on this because of the bezel size and the size of the case. Um, also, I have been told that this ring does come off. Uh, I purchased this watch used, and I've never been able to. I haven't tried a lot, but I've never been able to turn this one off. But I've been told you can take this off. I'm not going to keep messing with it. I, I don't know what the point of that is. It is a little difficult to get to this bezel, but you can turn it easy enough. You can kind of do it with one finger here as I'm demonstrating. Maybe you can hear this. Probably the loudest bezel I've ever had on a watch. Actually, I have not worn either of these watches in a while, and they both had died on me in, the, in storage here. So speaking of that, the Citizen, I believe, has a six-month battery life, and then the Seiko has a 10-month battery life. And both of these had gone into, I don't know if it's called sleep mode or, or safety mode, but the second hand was, would take like three seconds and then tick. And this one might not have been ticking at all, so I just left them outside for a couple days. You may have seen that on my Instagram post. So, of course, this is blue and red because it's the Patty dial, uh, Patty watch, and it has a wave dial. This is a cool watch. The bezel is, I think it's some kind of plastic or resin because this is a loomed bezel insert. And the loom is very good on this watch. I'm very curious to see how it compares to this one because this one has a good loom as well. I really like that orange minute hand. It's probably my favorite feature of this watch is that color orange. Um, other than that, I don't know. It's it's a fun watch, but it's, it's not really one of my favorite. I'll probably be selling this one, actually. The hands do have a nice shape to them. The dial is just so small. It's... Well, it is what it is. So, here's a close look at it. Uh, you can see some ripples on the loom there. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, Citizen Eco Drive. If you haven't had one of these in your collection, um, buy one and try it out for a little while. Uh, speaking of that, the price for this on this Citizen website, $400. The price for this one... I think I saw it for $450 on Amazon. So they're pretty comparable price-wise. And I think that covers all the specs I wanted to talk about. So let me try each of these on wrist. Oh, actually this one has, it comes with a, a dive extension strap. Which I guess you must just put on here maybe, but then that's... Seems like that would be upside down. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, clearly not a diver. But anyway, it comes with this extension strap so you can use it with your wetsuit, which I don't own one. All right, let's uh, get this one on wrist first. See, there I go again. I'm trying to put this uh, at the 3 o'clock, and it's a 9 o'clock crown. It's just so funny wearing this watch. I think if you had one on each wrist, you could use it for uh, going for walks and uh, getting a little extra workout. You have extra weights. Or you could use it as a defensive tool. Actually, I should probably... Oh, whatever. I should have put this one more notch tighter. probably zoom out takes up a lot of camera space actually considering that it's 48.4 diameter it doesn't look it doesn't look that big because it doesn't have lugs sticking out it's 
So I can get a sense of the sense of the thickness here. You know, this bezel really does add to the thickness as well. Without that bezel sticking up, and that probably adds another three, four millimeter to the height. Definitely will protect the crystal. Uh, speaking of the crystal, this is a mineral glass with AR coating. And it looks like it has some kind of a dome to it because it the uh, dial distorts here at extreme angles. But I can't... I can kind of feel the dome, but I can't really see it because of the way the bezel is. And the patty tuna. Where did I put that watch? Oh, there we go. Patty tuna has a flat hard lux crystal. I don't believe it has AR coating, but it doesn't really need it. Seeing as how it's a flat crystal. And we'll bring over a more normal size watch here, my SKX009, 42 millimeter case diameter. Actually, we'll uh, we'll zoom back in in a moment, and I'll show you the thickness of this watch compared to this one. So this does have a metal keeper, but the strap has a protrusion on. The tip of it here and that helps retain the strap within the keeper so it flares out this way and also flares out in the thickness one hundred seventy seven grams that's quite a heavy watch especially considering it's on a rubber strap or urethane strap so here's the Seiko Solar Tuna. I forgot the dimension on this. I think it was 46 millimeter case diameter, which does sound really large, but when you consider the lug is only 45 and a half, I think it was, it's not that big of a watch. And it's fairly thin too, 12 millimeter thin or thick. So you might see a watch back here. This is my Boulder Venture and this watch plus this watch the weight is 110 60 so 170 and that's less than the weight of this watch so these two watches together weigh less than this one now let's zoom back in we'll look at the thickness compared to my SKX and then we'll check out the loom on uh, these two It'll be a little hard to get all three because I have to hold this one by hand instead of setting it on the table. It doesn't look like it's 18.5 millimeter, but I measured it a couple times. The thickness, the SKX is 13 and a half, so that's another 5 millimeter thickness. Hmm, interesting. Here's the Solar Tuna. Then we'll look at the Solar Tuna compared to my SKX. I've been thinking about selling the Solar Tuna also, but I don't know. It might stick around. I just need to leave it somewhere somewhere where it gets sunlight because um, if you leave these in the dark for too long, you can actually, I think you can actually uh, kill the capacitor that's in here. So. Anyway, I'll pause the video and uh, be right back with the loom. Uh, actually, before I do that, if you could take a moment, please subscribe if you have not already. Like the video and leave a comment below. All right, it's going to be... Uh, it's, going to be it's going to be tough to call this one, but I think the Seiko is slightly brighter. That's the watch on the right here, the Seiko Solar Tuna. Hopefully I'm holding these on the same plane. I have to hold them by hand since the Citizen is on this urethane strap. It doesn't lay down flat very well. Uh, also, a portion of the Seiko bezel is loomed. Yeah, 
the hands and indices are smaller on the Seiko, but the loom looks to be brighter by eye. But on camera, I would say on camera, the Citizen looks a little brighter. But either way, uh, both of these have very good loom. I think you'd be more than happy with a loom on either of these watches. So that will conclude today's video. As always, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.